I think sometimes the, the public authorities that are in charge of this country underestimate just how angry and upset people are about the failures that are going on around them. When we say you are thought politicized things, what we are saying is stop talking when we are eating. When they call the roll call on Senate, on MCA, on MP, do not know whether to answer present or not guilty. The churches are beginning to say we don't want politicians to come and speak in our churches. That's a positive thing. holding uh, this um, activity is to allow citizens to come together and reflect on what actions to take uh, against corruption. We recently had um, um, a state-driven, state-sponsored anti-corruption summit that was um, um, held at, at State House in Nairobi. The, the, it, it has left significant amount of public discussions in its wake. Some people um, uh, I mean, and, and opinions about that uh, particular activity are wide-ranging. Some people think it was um, a, a, it was a show of a constructive show of engagement on the part of the government in the fight against corruption. Others think that it was much less than that, and that um, um, it was uh, it did not show enough uh, commitment. But in between that, um, there is also uh, what is happening at a practical level. The fact that we have got daily revelations of corruption against which there has not been much um, tangible action. So the question then being raised logically is whether um, whatever political commitment is, uh, is claimed to exist against corruption can be translated into, into practical action against uh, corruption. This year, our budget for servicing debt is 566 billion shillings out of a ballpark revenue of uh, 1.2 trillion shillings. It's actually now more than the total government salaries, wage bill, which is about 300 billion shillings. Yeah, 350. If you had count, count is about 400 billion. So we do not know what that money is. Okay, we know, of course, a lot of the debt we are paying is for a railway which is not even finished. Yeah? And for us to finish that railway, apparently, to get it to Marava, we're going to have to borrow double what we've already borrowed. It has to be a trillion shillings. Huh. So, when you think about corruption, please do not get lost in this political vernacular. Talking about development. Whenever you hear people who are corrupt uh, making uh, an argument about things that this is about development, these people are derailing development. He has stopped politicizing things. What they are saying is when we say you are not politicize things, what we are saying is stop talking when we are eating. Ninketaka to Batlish as he come our Kenya, to Batlish some of the words we use. To Naseba Ufisai. Corruption. Lakini like, kitafuta kwa lugha zetu za nyumbani na vernacular languages. Uh, there are very few where you have corruption. Because in our, many of our communities, it was not, people are not, uh, that corruption was not there. Lakini ukiwa ukiambia mtu mwizi, watu wanashika. The characteristics of this condition of planning that we're in is first of all it's it's about profit before everything else before health before education it's about people profiting constantly secondly the state said italian for this planning 
Thirdly, another characteristic, this state uses always disproportionate force. Kama mtu na ima kuku, unasikia mefungu wa meta kuku. Yule ya ima bini mboda, unaingia kotini, siku mbini ya natoka, siku tatu ya natoka, alako na wakiliwa. Kenya, in the whole of Africa, is number one in sub-Saharan Africa in terms of implementing international statutes in anti-corruption and getting experts from outside to assist us with our own laws and regulations with regard to statutes and laws to fight corruption. In fact, Kenya, I think, was either number two or number three in the world to ratify the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. And I'd like to read a quote from um, Theodore Roosevelt who said, when they call the roll call on Senate, the senators do not know whether to answer present or not guilty. When they call the roll call on Senate, on MCA, on MP, the senator, MCA, MP, president, deputy president, do not know whether to answer present or not guilty. And I think that is very true uh, for our case. It is obvious that corruption affects all manner of rights, civil, political, economic, social, and cultural, uh, because, uh, as has been said before, it, it, it creates a situation in which citizens no longer believe or no longer tr trust in institutions, they are in despair, and they, they no longer feel as if even what is being said that is being done to them is benefiting them. <laughs> nasimamia vita dhidi ya ufisadi ufisadi ulianza na mimi mwenyewe maana yake kuna wakati mwingine mtoto amevunjika mkono hata hata hapo amevunjika mkono alianguka kutebuka nikapeleka hospitali kwa Kenyatta kekenge na ya x-ray nafikiri ile huduma aliniona mimi tu kati ya wale watu walikuwa wamejipanga wengi sana huko akaona yule mama ndio acha nimweze kidogo ama nimuongeleshe kidogo akamwambia yule mmoja kupiga x-ray akamwambia kwa yule mama ni jirani yangu Ebu jirani njo na mimi ni kaja. Akaniambia tena utahudumiwa kwa haraka lakini ni X-ray inachukua shilingi 300. So mimi nikapea ni 300. Mtoto tukarukishwa line kulikuwa na wagonjwa wengine ambao wanakuja kupigwa picha za X-ray. Tukarukishwa line. Wakati tuliporukishwa line na mtoto tukaenda akahudumiwa kwa X-ray zilipigwa. Mimi na ngoja receipt nipewe. Jambo la kusikitik raja la kusikitisha na kuchekesha pia kwa wakati mmoja ni kwamba mtoto yote chini ya miaka mitano ilikuwa anapata matibabu ya bure hata x-ray sasa mimi nililipa shilingi 300 kwa hasara hapo nilazimisha nilitoa mimi nikitaka huduma ya nini ya haraka nilikwenda hasara mtoto alikuwa matibabu yake ilikuwa ni ya bure nilijiona mchinga we want this to be a conversation that is sustained that every day we are actually having conversations on actions strategies because nobody else is going to formulate a strategy in the war on corruption other than us, you and I, right? Innocent person who is a part of the nation, is a part of the nation. And the people who are in the country, they are in the country. When you are in the country, you are in the country. It is very open and clear. When you are in the country, you are in the country. 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 Watu kwa nachiko wanaenda pala, wanasema pesa inaenda kini. Pesa inaenda kwa magunia. Mali inaenda kwa magunia mbaka ea. Watu kwa mekikadia na watoki hiyo utunda kwa watu kabisa. Pesa hiko hizi na hiyo. Wako pala wameka, wanafanya hiyo utumuwa. Hiyo utumuzi wanafanya ingani. Then it's better, wajukue kwa kwa mwana hiki, yuna naumia, akae pala, yuwa towe haki kwa wala. Kwa magunia. They corrupt, wherever they may be, are not children of government. They are our brothers, they are our sisters. We are the people who elect these people to office. We have to hold our leaders, the governors, the MPs, to account for the money they have been given. We consider ourselves more responsive and I can give the name of my office at 10th floor of Cooperative Bank Billy that I can give my number and say that 
you can you can maybe contact you can contact Mary Waira. Then the witness protection agency. We are linking the piece of road to the witness protection agency, which already exists because the witness protection agency is part of the task force. Right now, I do think there is a division of the high court which was created in, uh, in June this year that is specifically dealing with anti-corruption. We then, uh, once we have uh, quite a number of magistrates, because we are also limited, there are only less than 400 magistrates in, in, the, uh, in the country, to have magistrates that are exclusively dealing with anti-corruption cases. <laughs> For the judiciary, we do not have for lack of a better word, uh, a, a propaganda machine to speak uh, about what we do. Maybe the public will know that a case has been dismissed and they will be bitter because our money was lost, but they wouldn't know the nitty gritty of what, why, why, why the case was dismissed. We have candidates who offer themselves, who we know are busy stealing today, and they are stealing from us, and we know it. And it doesn't matter whether they have been convicted or not, because if we use the standard of convictions, it's too low to, uh, to, to take us forward. What we need to, to do as citizens is to make sure that those who have been mentioned or those we know have been involved in corruption, or those we see going around giving money to voters, that those people are rejected. On the issue of the whistleblower protection, this is an important one. What I think might have missed, been missed is that the whistleblower protection bill is just a bill. It is not a law yet. So, as a sign of moving forward, perhaps what we should be looking at are the timelines to put this whistleblower protection law in place so that those who speak against corruption can do so without fear of intimidation. Every year since 1963, the head of state of the Republic of Kenya has given out commendations. Every year, we have seen various categories of people given uh, the Grand Moran, the Elder of the Burning Spear, and even um, other accolades. We have yet to see one event where we have actually acknowledged a whistleblower or somebody who has fought corruption and paid the price for this. So the integrity awards that we now give every year is an attempt to redress that problem. We would hope also that the Head of State would strip some of the ministers and some of the public officers that carry those titles when they are convicted or when they are prosecuted for corruption. Because if you did that, you would send a very clear message that not only will you be prosecuted in a court of law, but you are actually being shamed and socially uh, removed from civil society or civilized society, that you have hurt the state and you have hurt the republic. Wouldn't that be interesting? So what I'd like to do very quickly is to identify six, six individuals who over the course of 2016 have stood firm. It is often said that the people who are destroying our country are no more than 1,000 people. And that for every one, one, one person that steals from the government, there are 10 people who are able to see this happening. So we just need to raise an army of 10,000 people. And this problem will be resolved. So here are six of the 10,000 that we need. Lucy has continued to fight for transparency and the disbursement of funds in the Transoya County Youth Circle. She has championed transparency. She, at some point, was, uh, she managed to push for the suspension of the committee chair who was involved in a series of bribery cases in order to issue loans. With her effort, the youth circle has grown to a 15 million shilling, 15 million shilling equity over the last three years. So we know that transparency creates value. Please honor her by giving her a round of applause. Winnie has worked on issues of advocacy for justice, women's economic empowerment, gender-based violence, and she's particularly passionate about young girls. She's a representative of the Busia County to the World March of Women. She is also a young African leader. And she came to
she came to our attention when she went and took on a police officer who had been accused of defiling a 15-year-old girl in Kiambiu. These protests did not come without a cost. She was locked up with eight of her colleagues and today we honor her for her courage and for her stand for justice. Wanjeri is an activist who has worked for several years. Um, she is not an NGO person. She did not go and do project management. She doesn't handle donors' monies. She's actually a financial planner in a leading insurance company. After two years of soul searching, decided that actually justice would be her career. She became a full-time volunteer. In 2015, Wanjeri was physically viciously attacked for running an online campaign to expose the corruption in Mumia's sugar parastato. <laughs> despite the beating, despite the injuries, she continued to champion for equal rights for all. And many of you know her for the campaign she's running to free some of our men from uh, our Kenyans who were arrested and charged without due process in Sudan. She has done more for them than the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Bernard Mushere, certified financial examiner and president or chairman of the Associated Association of Certified Fraud Examiners of Kenya. He has worked in the government for 33 years. For 26 years, he was in the area of internal audit. Many of us only heard about him in the context of the Afia House scandal. This is the man that broke that did the work that led to the, the, the story being broken to 40 million Kenyans. He did not break the story. He simply did the work within government that he was paid to do and the rest was taken up by the mass media and by the activists in this room. It is not the first time he has done this work. He has been known for exposing corruption in the area of construction, not just in terms of the Hola, Gassan Road, but also embassies in Dar es Salaam, Abuja, Nigeria, Islamabad, and South Africa. This man has kept our interests on behalf of the country. Please congratulate him. One person is, of course, award-winning Kenya president, one of our most famous. He is also a human rights activist. He continues to fight for Kenyans on all the issues that uh, demand our attention. He is recognized not just in this country many times, but also in many countries across the world. And recently he declared his interest in serving the public not as an activist, but as a member of parliament. So please congratulate him for continuing to do this work on our behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the next round of Integrity Champions 2016. Congratulations!